This episode brought to you by supportthesecond.com. The recent shootings, especially those in schools, is bringing about stricter gun reform bills. Congress has just passed the most significant gun reform bill we've seen in decades. But as we all know, bad guys will always have access to guns. The Support the Second coin usually retails for $24.95, but it's currently free for a limited time to bring awareness to the issues affecting gun owners today. Get your free Second Amendment coin today by going to www supportthesecond.com. If you're proud to be an American and proud of your gun rights, you'll love this Second Amendment coin. Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm just sitting here enjoying my coffee and adding on to the list of things that are supposedly racist now. And it's a big list. I mean, we got rugged individualism, the nuclear family, the scientific method, mathematics, having a work ethic, competition, the English language, Dr. Seuss, wearing your hair in braids, dressing up for Halloween, being colorblind, facial recognition technology, the Washington and Jefferson Memorial, voter ID laws, standardized testing, dress codes, and time. Yes, time is racist. I'm serious, this list just keeps going but there's more important things to life. So for now, we're just gonna have to go ahead and add traffic accidents to the list because why not? One quick side note, does anybody besides me notice how blaming white people for literally everything bad that happens in life is very similar to anti-Jewish conspiracy theories that do the same thing? I don't know, maybe I'm completely crazy here or it's just different when they do it. Anyway, it is the prerogative of semi-communists in this country, apparently, to unite every group of people that isn't white against the white menace. And part of that is blaming every disparity that exists between black and white people specifically on a racist conspiracy against them. And it shows uh, a particular epidemic of traffic deaths, pedestrian fatalities in this country. And it's unique to the United States. Um, 6,500 people um, died in 2020 walking um, and being struck and killed. Those numbers are a two-third increase over the last decade. Uh, and Sounds like an accident, not a racist conspiracy. Anyway. As a matter of fact, 2021 data is showing things are getting worse. But getting to your point, unfortunately, we see disproportionate deaths in Black, Latinx, Latino, um, and low-income communities. As a matter of fact, blacks were two times as likely as non-white non Hispanics to die um, while walking in their neighborhoods. Um, so it's an obviously a white conspiracy. There's no other explanation for that other than a racist white cabal plotting secretly against black people in this country, obviously. Epidemic, it's having disproportional effects on black and brown communities but it is a solvable one, and we should we can talk about those solutions. I'm sure you've- Yeah, I mean, look, when we look at that graphic, I mean, when you look at just the, the, the disproportionate number of African-Americans that, that die, I mean, 8.21 per 100,000 compared to whites at 6.33. I mean, uh, how can this be helped? How can we, how can we help fight this? <laughs> How can we help fight this? Oh, and you notice how animated he got about the disparity here between black Americans at 8.21% and white people at 6.33, but completely skipped over Latinos there at 6.81%. I mean, 6.81 and 6.33, those are pretty close together. So why isn't it a disparity between black and Latino people? Why are Latinos not the villain here? And, Actually, the most glaring thing that you would notice in this graph is that Asian people are down at 1.42%. Like, that's really, really low. This is a per capita graph. It does account for population size. So why isn't this about a disparity between the black and Asian community or between uh, the white and Asian community? I mean, there is a much higher rate of white people being killed and uh, uh, traffic accidents than Asian people, but apparently that's not a problem. And it's actually, it's, it's interesting because they say the same thing when it comes to uh, median income earnings in this country, uh, uh, wealth in this country by race. And if you look at the stats, what you're gonna find is that Asian people are at the very top of the country. But yet when you hear about 
disparities in income. It's never a disparity between white and Asian people or between Asian and Latino or even Asian and black. No, no, no. It's always white. It's always between black and white or black and Latino. It's like they only want to talk about uh, a disparity that can somehow move their agenda forward. And their agenda is essentially rakes Marxism. I mean, they, that's why you hear so much about equity now instead of equality, because essentially they want to use the law and the government to prop people up based on race, which will require racial discrimination that gets white people to do. So that's kind of what you're seeing here. It's kind of like they're building the building blocks for that, the justifications for it. And of course, during this segment, they don't discuss any other possible reasons for this disparity outside of, you know, it's a white man racist conspiracy. Uh, and they mentioned that highways were built through these neighborhoods that are now predominantly black and brown and low income. But, you know, a lot of those low income people are Asian people and they're not having these high rates of, uh, of, of accidents. Neither are the Latino people. The Latino people are living, according to this guy, they're living right next to the black people. Yet there's a huge disparity there. And it's pretty much the same disparity as between white people. But they don't bring that up. It just sort of all glossed over. I would suggest that this disparity might have at least something to do with the disproportionate representation of black males in violent crime. Not to mention the skyrocketing amount of carjackings that are taking place right now in Democrat-run cities where they've gone just totally soft on crime. There have already been 191 carjackings in the city of New Orleans this year alone. Through all of last year, there were a total of 177. Now, most of these carjackings, and this is true in a lot of other places, Washington, D.C., we think, most of these are committed by people under the age of 18. Why? Because they know they'll get off. There's no cause. And it's not just happening in New Orleans. What's interesting, if you pull back a little bit, and we have because we think that carjacking is a really clear indication of things unraveling, you find that cities with Soros-backed DAs and well-funded diversion programs for at-risk youth are seeing surges in carjackings. Could there be a connection? Excuse me, folks, one second. I'm getting some breaking news. Reports are coming in from PBS that they've now upgraded having a functioning border from racist to fascist. So there's this sense of, of, of pulling up the drawbridge and saying, oh, you know, we're, we're done now. Mm. This is what our nation is. This is what the space we occupy is. And the rise of nationalism, or the, the, the new rise of nationalism, if you like, and to some extent that veering towards fascism is often <laughs> connected to these lines because they become the spaces where you exert who you are. So there you have it, folks. It seems that the radical far left semi-communist propagandists are now taking their cue from Pedo Joe and they're simply calling everything that they disagree with fascists now. I'm serious. They're just going to start pouring it on the closer and closer that we get to the November elections, attaching these labels to everything that they oppose. You oppose drag queens dancing for kids? You're a fascist. You oppose vaccine mandates or masking kids at school? You're a fascist. Oppose so-called assault weapons ban? They're going to call that anti-police. Get ready for that. But also fascist. Oppose abortion without limits? You're a fascist. Oppose destroying our country so we can keep sending billions to Ukraine? Well, that makes you pro-Putin and also a fascist. It's going to be a big old shit sandwich and we're all going to have to take a bite. Our only real hope here is that people see through it. But we still have two full months. And that's a lot of time for the Democrats and the media to just bathe this country in their fear propaganda. All right, folks, that's all I have for that one. Thanks a lot for watching. How do you like this new style? If you like it or not, let me know in the comments. Make sure to hit that like button, share, subscribe, and like I said, leave a comment. Also, make sure to check out supportthesecond.com and get your free coin. Shipping is not included. Thanks a lot.